Hi everyone and uh, very good evening. Thank you Dr. Kamal for uh, arranging this uh, uh, very important webinar. This is actually a need of an hour uh, because as you know like uh, in March 2020 our life has taken a very unexpected turn where most of us are like now how homebound. Though people have started going to office there are still many of us who are still working from home. And when we are working from home, the levels of stresses and the problems coming from it are totally different. And uh, it is important to understand what uh, is, you know, can be done or what all environmental changes you need to do so as you can reduce the physical and the mental stress. By ergonomics, I'm going to tell you uh, simple tools by which you can actually reduce the stress on your joints, okay, and how you can prevent it rather than treat it. Uh, see, about 80% of the adults experience lower back pain at some or the other point in their lifetime. Okay, but these chances are going to be more when we are working from home because the home situation or home scenario is a little different than when we are working from office. Now, how is it different? Uh, one is when we are working at office, the room temperature is controlled right because we have centralized air conditioners okay this is particularly when you're working in a bigger company okay but at people uh, your employer must be taking care of good ventilation good lighting but at home it may not be the case because the work environment is uh, you know the home environment is not meant for working or not particularly meant for desk work now at office the wi-fi connectivity is going to be good or the network connectivity is going to be good because your work is dependent on that usually at home it is mainly for the entertainment or uh, you know uh, you you are a single user consumer so basically the wi-fi can be a bigger issue at home and that can lead to uh, you know actually miscommunications and that can also lead to stress now, uh, naturally, when you're working in uh, office, you are more focused towards work and you are you are more productive. But at home, uh, you might just be distracted, right? Because there's so many uh, things going on. There might be some household chores, okay? There might be some work at home and plus you have to do your office work. So it is a little different when you're working from home. Uh, this is a very important point but that is rhythm, rhythm because see circadian rhythm is actually a body clock so when we are working at home there are many people who are sleeping late at night or getting up late in the morning and their whole body clock changes daily okay and then this can lead to a, a great stress on a hormonal system because there's a certain time or a schedule for the hormonal systems to release hormones in the body Okay, so what happens is that whenever uh, the person gets up, there is a certain hormone required for digestion, for, you know, uh, for metabolism. Those hormones would not be secreted at different, different times, depending on what time you get up. Okay, there is a certain rhythm set in. This rhythm gets disturbed, leading to a lot of physical stress. Hyperacidity, constipation, headaches, all are the signs of this uh, rhythm getting disturbed. At office, naturally, there's uh, social exposure, you're with colleagues, with your friends, but at home, naturally, when working alone can lead to uh, boredom. Now, uh, the, this is a very important slide for all of us, that how work from home is different, okay, in terms of ergonomics when uh, you're working from office. Okay, because see, in office we have a work desk, but at home a normal utility or table or uh, a bed or a sofa is something what we would be using for uh, doing work, right? Now, in office uh, the chairs are adjustable, okay, but in, uh, at home the dining table, table or a regular chair with, a, with, a, with or without armrest or a normal uh, regular sofa or sometimes even bean bag. And in fact, you know, there are many people who are not having a proper seating arrangement also and that is being used for work, right? Uh, at office, external keyboard, if it is a requirement, maybe it, it would be available, but at home it may not be available and you have to manage with the keyboard of laptop. Uh, in office, of course, if two monitors are needed, they would be available. At home, they may not be available. And sometimes now, because they need to work on two screens at a time, they are either using a laptop and a small, like, you know, mobile screen or a small tab. 
uh, and you know the smaller the gadget more is the stress okay so which is something which you really need to uh, see for now the optimal height um, in the office uh, the, the optimal height of your pc okay the distance between uh, you and the pc or the laptop and the height at which it is placed can be maintained or should be maintained at least but at home it is uh, a, a certainly a problem um more than important thing is that you know in office most of the times we have indirect lighting as in there is no direct glare on the screen okay but at home the lighting conditions can be poor okay and uh, at office naturally the mobile phone uh, would be limited of course this would be uh, like you know certain people would need to use mobile phone uh, for that profession but otherwise uh, to communicate because you're not meeting your colleagues and your team members from home uh, the use of mobile phone has definitely increased joint pains um, which are common uh, when you're working from home are uh, mainly neck pain back pain wrist and shoulder okay so neck pain back pain will also include pain in the upper back region all right so basically what is happening that because we're going to sit for longer hours for eight to nine hours which but why it is important to consider this as a work from home problem is because like i told you that the situation or the scenario is little different when you're working from home and when you're working from office right so when you're sitting in one position for longer time for eight to nine hours at least if the furniture is better if the work environment is better then the level of stresses is going to be less okay and which is why this point is really important wrist pain yes that is because of the repetitive movement which happens at the wrist and at the finger level okay when you're typing when you're using mouse or when you're using gadgets like uh, uh, your tablet or your uh, mobile phone all right the shoulder pain yes very important and in shoulder pain particularly i would like you to focus on uh, the stiffness in the shoulder because as you know that in india we have uh, maximum people uh, who are diabetics particularly in the age group of 35 to 55 and um, because of the lockdown many people are not able to exercise they're not going out or not doing any home exercises so which is why the sugar levels are uh, really having fluctuations leading to stiffness in the shoulders and so this is one point which we really need to consider because a uh, shoulder pain is not only because of the poor posture but it can also be because of the fluctuations in the shoulder or uh, sugar levels now uh what causes joint pain okay now uh, the, this is a very important slide though it is technical this is going to help us to understand that uh, how uh, you know you can uh, deal with this okay now first and foremost uh, uh you know uh, static posture so static posture meaning when you're sitting for longer hours okay so longer hours means what okay when you're sitting in one position for more than 45 minutes okay we would consider that as a static posture does that mean that you have to get up after every 45 minutes i don't intend to uh, say that because after 45 minutes if you keep getting up that is going to disturb your link right so after 45 minutes we suggest that you do micro breaks that is going to be a part of this um, webinar we're going to discuss that in detail so you need to keep changing the posture so that there is no excess use of the single muscle and so muscle fatigue can be avoided all right then the wrong posture uh wrong posture naturally because what would happen is when you're sitting in a wrong position and in a static position your energy expenditure is going to be more and so that would lead to more pain poor ergonomics yes poor ergonomics means what's going to happen that uh, whenever a person is uh, not able to have a proper workstation even if you want the person to be in the proper sitting position or working position he will not be i mean you cannot just sit on a broken chair and expect the person to be uh, sitting upright right it's the same thing with bean bag okay bean bag would be relaxing okay maybe if you want to sit for 10 15 minutes but you cannot be working for 8 to 9 hours sitting in a bean bag that would lead to a lot of stress then uh the next one is uh repetitive movement okay now repetitive movement is uh, basically uh opposite to static posture right 
now uh, what is actually happening over here is uh, you know particularly for the wrist and the finger joint whenever we hit a one key or one key stroke it's equivalent to 89 grams of uh, pressure created now imagine how many times or how many hours in a day you are using your keyboard and mouse if you can multiply that uh, to in a week so you would come to know that you know your small joints of the hand are taking a lot more load uh, which is which can be easily be compared with the heavy weight lifter okay uh, calcium and vitamin d deficiency yes of course because many of us are not getting vitamin d3 okay vitamin d3 active form i mean because see vitamin d is something which is available in our, in our body it is available in an inactive form all right but to convert that inactive form to active form we require uv rays and ir from sunlight okay because of lockdown naturally we are not getting that okay and so though our body has inactive vitamin d3 d okay we are not having a, enough fuel for it now why i'm stressing on this d vitamin because whatever dietary calcium you're having let's say for an example you're having milk milk products okay or uh, you're having ragi that has to reach to your bones okay so it's not like you're going to have calcium rich food and it's going to go to your bones or muscles okay it has to have a carrier it has to have a logistic system and that logistics is d vitamin d so uh, unless you have a fuel to drive that carrier it's not going to go to your bones and which is why your active form of vitamin d3 is going to be very important because we are not getting enough sunlight there's no fuel there's no active d3 so the calcium which you're eating is actually getting wasted if the d3 levels are not well maintained which is why you know it's very important that we focus on this point if you are really deficient you need to take supplements for it as of now uh then uh, lack of exercise yes lack of exercise is going to lead to weight gain weight gain in turn going to give you uh, aches and if you're having pains then you're not going to exercise so which is more like a vicious loop so we need to take care of that mental stress yes because uh, if you are mentally stressed your physical pains or stresses are going to be more okay you might have experienced that whenever you are you know irritated or you are frustrated with work the back pain or the shoulder pain is more okay which is very common okay and this happens with everyone because body can fight with only uh, one devil at a time uh coming to the solutions of all this i know this is a very uh, cheesy picture okay because i have mentioned it's a lovely triangle okay to avoid joint pain uh why uh, uh, but this is a this is very easy to understand okay so uh, three things very important this slide is going to come through the webinar uh, two or three times now uh three important points which you need to consider okay one is posture second is ergonomics okay and third is uh, taking micro break so posture is something which like you know how you are sitting how you are carrying yourself okay uh are going to stay in that certain position what all environmental changes you would be doing okay so um, uh, for example uh, you know if you want to sit straight how you would align your workstation your chair and the desk okay so as the stresses can be less so which is like you know the main topic for today but unless you know what is the right posture you won't be able to do any in ergonomic changes so we have to focus on that which is the first point for today and if you are sitting straight or if you are you know maintaining the right position if you have aligned the desk but if you are in the same position or the static position for longer time it's not going to be helpful because as you know that our spine was never meant for sitting in one position for that long and which is why i would stress on taking micro breaks okay so let's move on to the first topic which is posture is it the same yes ma'am yeah. yeah all right we're so, here saying that yeah so 90 degree sitting like i said that nowadays is not recommended instead you should be sitting in an angle of 120 degrees okay so if your back is well rested okay and if your hips are higher compared to the knee level 
then naturally the stress on lower back is going to be less and then you would be able to maintain this angle better also i would be sharing you with you how you can do that okay and which is by maintaining i mean understanding the basic anatomy or understanding the ba basic posture is really important all right now even if you are sitting in any good position let's say you have maintained good angle about 120 degrees your back is well rested your spine is straight okay but if you are maintaining it for longer time then it is really not going to be helpful okay and which is why what is best is dynamic sitting okay dynamic as in you have to keep changing your sitting posture every about 30 to 40 minutes okay so if you have to choose between a posture which is ideal and at a static okay that means you are sitting in a very good position for 2 hours okay it would give you back ache all right but your posture may not be that good okay i'm not talking about bad or really bad postures but if your posture is not that good but if you keep changing it often then the chances of having back aches or neck pains are less okay so if you have to compare between a wrong posture which is dynamic and a static posture which is ideal go for a wrong posture but keep changing it okay am i making sense all right now if you see the wrist positions because i also told you about uh, how you have to uh, keep your uh, you know you if the repetitive movements can cause carpal tunnel syndromes or uh, joint pains in the fingers we also need to see how the elbow and the wrist positions can be so if you see the left uh, picture you have to keep your elbows as close to your body as possible and this angle has to be 90 degrees over here all right so your shoulders are relaxed okay and elbow angle is 90 degrees and why this is important because i do not want my patients to shrug the shoulders because many a times what happens is this particular muscle which is at the base of the neck okay many of us have pain at that particular area because this muscle is overworking okay even when we are working or not working you can just imagine like you know if you feel this uh, you know the tone of this muscle it is unnecessarily tight you know we have a habit of shrugging our shoulders because it is one of a very dominant and a stronger muscle in neck but if we keep doing that i mean if we keep using it for a longer time naturally it would lead to fatigue and pain of course the wrist posture has to be straight okay no angles in it and keep your monitor or a screen um uh, i mean the keyboard as close to you as possible all right now these are some simple uh, postures okay i will not go in details of all of this okay but i just want you to understand two important postures from this slide one is whenever you are doing any bending activities just see to it that you are bending from your hip and knee so that you are not causing lot of strain in your lower back and this is particularly important in the bonding hours because i told you that the discs which are there they absorb water at night when we sleep what would happen that you know if the discs have already absorbed water and then you're stooping a lot then that can lead to slip disc so generally if you have heard of slip disc or pid for the types uh, who are attending pids are generally uh, you know these cases are in the mornings okay especially young pids because uh, at night the disc imbibes water okay and so if they are doing a lot of front bending activities or a lot of heavy lifting in morning hours then that can really happen you know the annular tears can uh, you know really be stressful now the second thing that i want you to understand from the slide is whenever you are standing for longer time keep a small block or maybe a wooden block or a, a box okay so that your knee is slightly bent and then you can keep switching your legs okay so with that way you can minimize the stress on your lower back of standing for longer time all right and um, because we are here i would just like to tell you that whenever you are sitting on sides to relax the back bend both the knees if this is not helping then maybe you can take a pillow between knees so that there's no rotation at the sacroiliac joint okay no rotation in the lower back so with that the stresses can be less so even for the physios attending but if the person is sitting cross leg for the longer time what would happen at the sacroiliac joint there would be a twist there would be a strain and this person might just experience lot of pain 
while he is sleeping on the same side or on the opposite side if the person tends to you know shift uh, the right leg towards left like in you know, a side lying position so these are the important uh, postural situations which we have to give yes now coming back to you know the earlier slide now this is a very important slide like i told you so uh, i've already discussed about posture and now to maintain these right postures or to help the postures we have to see what all ergonomical care we can take okay now uh, as i told you that it is basically a uh, you know a greek term and which means either adjust the workstation to patient people or adjust people to the workstation all right so uh, so far i have told you what all you can do okay to maintain the posture how you should be maintaining the posture now i would be talking about what all adjustments you can do in the workstation so that you would be able to maintain that position all right all right so this is going to be a like ideal scenario of course i do not intend that you be in this position it is not always possible but we have to go to nearer to this position and to do that what are ergonomic you know uh, changes you can do now the best position is if your neck is straight if your shoulders are relaxed if your elbows are at side and at 90 degrees bent if the back is supported with a curve if the wrists are neutral okay no deviation if there has to be a good knee space now to maintain it what all you can do to see to it that the top of the screen is at the eye level okay so if you want to keep the neck straight you have to keep the neck i mean the screen at the eye level the second thing is if possible uh, you can have a copy holder and keep the screen straight okay keyboard has to be at elbow height if the keyboard is at elbow height naturally your elbows are going to be bent at 90 degrees and they would be at side now imagine this lady had a keyboard placed here she would have to keep her elbow straight and which will in turn strain her shoulders right keep the mouse by keyboard okay some people either do not have a mouse or then they keep mouse over here okay not next to the keyboard if there's no enough space of course you can keep it here but we are talking about the ideal situation when the mouse has to be next to keyboard wrist rest if it is possible so that you are not really struggling to maintain the wrist position and foot rest only if necessary this is very important because you know sometimes like uh, i don't know about how uh, if people are managing at home but you know at uh, you know an ergonomic uh, evaluation setups we get so many inquiries for foot rests from hrs and uh, you know sometimes that's really not needed because a uh, foot rest is actually important if your feet are not resting on floor when you are sitting if you're already tall and if you take a foot rest now imagine what would happen if you're tall your feet are resting on floor if you take a foot rest your knees are going to go higher compared to the hip level right and that is actually in turn going to lead to more back pain so there is no point in taking foot rest if your feet are resting so the first thing what you have to basically adjust is your chair height all right i'll show you okay no pressure points so in this uh, like i mentioned that these are the important points so uh, out of this now imagine a person who is using pc at the moment okay the person will have to keep the you know a uh, screen at the eye level so maybe you can use some blocks or books so that the eye level can be maintained and to maintain a height of elbow 90 degrees and feet resting properly first thing you need to maintain is chair height and how you can maintain the chair height because naturally if i'm considering that you're not having a chair which is having a adjustable chair height maybe you can keep a small cushion okay over here or maybe you can choose a chair which is not having a you know contour in the seat pan that is something which we can definitely do all right now uh, this is again a laptop ergonomics the ideal situation would be if you have a laptop razor and a keyboard which is separate okay but uh, because the topic for today is how you can maintain that at home uh, i'm not going to discuss this in a lot of detail but this is how if you are using this Like, you know if you have to use laptop for eight to nine hours this is ideal way how you can use it not to use laptop as a laptop but actually you do use it as a, a desktop only so use the laptop screen and a separate keyboard okay i'm not uh, going in details about this at the moment now uh, this is something which we can all relate to 
okay and this is probably the topic which everyone is interested in uh, so see like when we're working from home uh, naturally the work conditions like i mentioned at home are really different than when we are working at uh, office so uh, now i'm considering that all of us like you know who are attending would be interested in work from home using laptop so uh, that is how i have planned my presentation now the person might be using laptop which is kept on the lap or maybe a person is keeping the laptop on the desk and stooping a lot now you can imagine for the first person okay actually if the person is resting it on the lap what is going to happen he will have to slightly either do a plantar flexion angle okay so slight tilt in the ankle so that the there would be a little bit of freeze for the laptop and this can also lead to increased hip flexion right so it would be slight the knees would be slightly higher than the hips causing acute angle in the lower back and the pain now for this lady on the right hand side you can like you know i don't have to even tell you but she's going to stoop a lot right and for the therapist now you can imagine if she's already into so much of thoracic kyphosis she is going to have cervical forward headed posture one but all her cervical movements are going to take place at a little higher level compared to uh, our, our routine uh, c7 uh, t8 level right and which is why she is likely to have lot of neck pain particularly in the trapezius region now what all precautions or what all adjustments you can do over here now let us talk about the first posture um again for this person we have made it really ideal okay uh, the person sitting again in a di on a dining table but he kept books under the laptop okay and a small keyboard over here okay with this early enough you see this red dotted line the person had to bend down your the laptop screen would have been but now because it's kept on books it is now at his you know eye level is slightly lower but still nearer to ideal his elbows are closer to 90 degrees i would not say 90 but this is still better than you know completely flexed or extended elbows now if imagine a person does not have a external keyboard then what he can simply do is keep a about 3 to 4 inch book under the laptop okay so that at least he will not have to bend down a lot and he will have a better trapezius work right and so with this at least he won't be shrugging the shoulder because there would be good tilt over here okay now it is also important in this picture this is actually wrong i would not recommend this this is a lot of glare for this person okay if you see the window the curtains are not properly uh, properly closed and this can actually affect his vision quality so i would generally recommend my clients to close the you know sun blinds or curtains so there is no direct lighting on the laptop or their screen working screen even small gadgets or mobile phone so that there is no eye strain you might have heard of tension headaches and all so tension headaches can also happen because of this lot of or glare in the screen okay so sometimes we might have patients with lot of cervical pain okay but having lot of headache so before treating them you can also ask them to get a photo of their workstation so sometimes this can be one of the you know a uh, complete or uh, probing factor now uh, there are some uh, uh, you know external uh, keyboard or laptop razors which are available you can get it online or uh, you can definitely get it uh, in the shops now okay so just instead of a book you can have a different angles if you keep uh, this picture uh, in front of you you can change the angle of uh, or the size of books okay so that you can have varying angle Uh, for this again this is of a variable height so something like this can be used and again this is very ideal where you use the laptop stand but this is this can be only used if you have a external keyboard uh now for the person who sitting on chair let's take the second example like i said that if you keep a cushion on the chair okay we also get online or in the surgical shops a chair called a cushion called as bed cushion okay so this is called as little bit of wedge now we can imagine a person sitting on this what is happening because this height is more compared to this or well, the knees are going to be lower compared to the hip joints this is more like a saddle sitting you remember in the slide i told you that we can have a slight modification of the chair which you already have and we can actually maintain this angle 
okay so this is going to be very easy and very handy and i'm sure all of us are at least having a small cushion at home which is not very soft okay don't rush to buy this wedge cushion okay you can simply use a coir cushion which is a firm one but has a good consistency you can also use a high density uh, foam cushion which will be firm so the reason why it has to be firm or it has to be a coir one because if you sit on it it should not just sink down because of your weight because if it's a soft pillow it's going to be you know because of your weight it will just get sunk down and it's got not going to be helpful if you're sitting on floor straight of course picture what you can do is you can simply sit on a small round cushion or a firm or you know square cushion so that again the same logic wherein your hip levels are slightly higher than the knee and this position this picture is just for uh, you know uh, for your understanding how the cushion can be placed but ideal would be if this person had a back support okay so you can take a support of wall okay or maybe nowadays even yoga seats are available which can give you a good support for lower back all right so this can definitely be a very handy so uh, i'm sure like for all of us if you do not have a keyboard at least this is possible right closing the indirect or you know glare the light is definitely possible sitting on a chair with back support and keeping no knees lower than the hip definitely possible so you try and be you know as near to the ideal posture as you can okay so that is going to be really really helpful okay because i'm not expecting that you you know keep buying all this uh, furniture stuff if you are able to nothing like it but if you're not that doesn't mean that you have to suffer all right yeah so uh, this is again a very very common uh, position right because most of the times like you know when we're walking from home we might be sitting on bed not attending meeting then we might be in a really slouch position and then that can actually affect the uh, you know the spine health now for imagine for this person what is happening is uh, i'm assuming that the person is sitting on supported the legs are crossed if you're sitting it cross like for longer time naturally you might have sleeping foot because the nerve get may get compressed right so popliteal nerve may get compressed and then uh, you know there might be irritation for a while uh, you might be knowing that some people are actually on suffering from neuro praxia because of this so this is something which we really have to discourage for longer times and imagine now this person has to bend down to see the screen so imagine the neck angle the upper back angle the elbow angle is more than 90 so everything is at stress right so in the next slide i'm going to show you how to do uh, a correction for this uh, now if, now if many of us now um, i mean come on like if you're working for 8 9 hours we cannot expect you to sit in the right postures all the time so you're going to be slouched but there is a better way of doing it okay so it's not like i'm encouraging you to sit in slouch posture but definitely you have to see to it how you can minimize the joint problems and reduce our work right uh this is another posture yeah many of us can relate right sitting on sofa or sitting like you know lying down and then using top and then prone lying and uh, then using pc actually i'll tell you what this is a comparatively better posture again if you maintain it for less a time okay because like, if you remember the slide where i told you that if you're lying on stomach then the lower back curvature can also be maintained just make sure that you're not bearing lot of pressure on your shoulder uh, so that the muscles are not strained of course it is not a really good posture for the neck but of course if you keep changing it, it's going to be a beneficial one for your lower back all right so this is something uh, which we generally discourage okay so if you come to our opts we are going to tell you that this is not something which you are going to you know look forward to but i'm sure even if we do uh, you are you know most of the times when you are not in the meetings or when you are working on really uh, you know taxing project you might be in these postures so we have to see to it that how you can minimize the stress at least of course if you're already suffering from pain so if you're having radicular pain like in the arm or if you're having giddiness i would not recommend doing something like this this is just for the normal you know pain the fatigue pain the tiredness pain if you are able to support it well then these postures can definitely be maintained if you come to the first slide over here this is a supported half lying 
Okay, so now what this person is doing is he's taken two to three pillows. So that his neck is properly supported, the upper back is supported, and if you can see the angle, the lower back is well supported. Okay, so if you go back to this posture, see what this girl is doing. Her neck is bent, the upper back unsupported, her back is resting, but this is causing a lot of twists and turns in the lower back and the neck region, which is something which we really need to take care of, and which is why supported half lying is something which we would recommend. If you're keeping a laptop on your lap, then naturally, if in this position, your uh, screen is going to come in front of your eye level. Of course, like I mentioned, even if it is very comfortable, if you maintain it for a long time, this is also going to give you pain. So maybe set a reminder for half an hour and keep changing the posture. That's really a good idea or way to go about it. If you are in sitting posture, maybe you can rest your laptop on the lap, slightly bend your knees. So at least I understand that the elbow posture won't be great in this, but your screen would be still at the eye level. So this way you can minimize the stress. Now these postures can really be also helpful for the students. Okay, because as you know, many of our schools and colleges have started online. So I'm sure like for students particularly, it's very difficult to maintain a certain position for five, six hours. So it would be a good idea to give them at least these uh, situations so that, you know, they won't come up with uh, joint problems in their early life. Of course, um, if you're sitting on, a, a, like, you know, on a bed or a sofa, then you can definitely keep a small pillow under the laptop, okay? So that this angle, if it would have been here, has reached to this level, okay? So we are minimizing the stress. I'm not talking about the idle position here. And if you're really, really lazy and you really want to lie down and work, there is a bed laptop stand available. Yes. Okay. So this is uh, probably need of time. Okay. So with this, you can actually be, uh, you know, in your bed, lying down, your shoulders are resting. Of course, this position is not really great if you maintain it for a longer time for your neck. Okay. But yes, for a lazy person or maybe people who are in lower back pain or really need to complete work, on a scheduled date, maybe this can be of use. Now, uh, here are some points which I'm going to go very quickly through. Okay, uh, like I mentioned that the monitor height or your screen height has to be at your eye level. Monitor tilt, this is a very important point because see, many people keep their laptop's screen or desktop screen very straight. And that does not really make sense because you imagine yourself using or, you know, reading a magazine or newspaper. We don't hold it very straight, right? We have a tilt, which is about 10 to 15 degrees. So imagine if you, like, you know, read a magazine or a newspaper, which is very straight in front of your eyes, that's going to strain your eye muscles. We don't want that happening. And which is why the tilt has to be there, which is very important for the monitor. Monitor distance, very crucial. Uh, monitor distance minimum is 50 to 100 centimeters. So you should not be sitting very close to the monitor. So if you see this girl um, in this picture, she is very, very close to the screen. And that is something which we have to avoid. Okay, now because we are on this slide, what I can tell you is for this person, you can definitely uh, advise the person to take a small pillow if the person is using laptop as a laptop. Okay, so with that, the screen level would please, and you would not have to do a plant reflection or angle movement. All right, so coming to this slide again, the brightness, of course, it has to be adjusted according to the room uh, light. And uh, of course, don't have it very bright or too low, otherwise it's going to strain the eyes. And the glare, which I have already discussed. Uh, very important points. Okay, we are coming to the end of the presentation, but of course, I want you to understand uh, that whenever we bend, okay, the neck muscles are being used at the anti gravity position. So imagine these are the neck muscles, and they have to maintain the head over the thorax or on the shoulders. So if your neck is straight, naturally, these muscles are working less. Now imagine when you start bending, these muscles need to work anti-gravity to bear the weight of the head. And which is why you bend more, the weight of the head appears more, okay? So if it would have been straight, this is just, um, you know, for example, it's just not, these are not actual figures, okay? So for example, if the, this person, if he's trying to keep the neck straight, his weight of head, let's say, is weighing about 27 pounds. If it's going to bend so much up to about 60 degrees, it's going to be about 60 pounds. 
So it's apparent increase in the weight and which is why the neck muscles would start hurting. So the best way is use the mobile phone at your eye level as possible. I understand it is not possible all the time. So then in that case, best way is to at least keep wearing the neck angle. In mobile organoids, these are two important points that whenever you are using mobile with like, you know, sorry, one hand, like, you know, you hold it in the same hand and use your uh, thumb or this MCP to use the joint, I mean, to use the applications, keep your easy applications in this zone, right? So for the physiotherapist, you can imagine so that there's no lot of opposition, okay? Because if you do a lot of, you know, stretching, lot of flexion, yeah, there's a possibility of decarbons happening, right? You might have heard of blackberry thumb and all. It is all because if you're, you have to stretch your thumb a lot. So if uh, this is a comfortable reach, so if you are using, let's say, your calls or your WhatsApp for a longer time, keep it in this zone, all right? That would be more beneficial. And the ones which you use less can be in this zone, all right? Now, this is the last uh, uh, point in the triangle. I've discussed about the posture and for, about the ergonomics. But if you do not take micro breaks in between, all this is going to fail. Because like I mentioned that the spine was never meant for sitting for that long. So unless you're taking breaks during your work, the same muscles are being used on and off. And then that can really lead to stresses. So taking micro breaks is something which is very important. Now at our clinic, we recommend our patients to take breaks every 30 to 40 minutes for about five seconds. So five seconds is something that is very doable. Okay, if you ask patients to get up from their chair after every 15, I mean 30 minutes, it's not always possible because see practically you can imagine like a person is in a meeting, we cannot leave the meeting and you know take a walk. Okay, office also same like you know if you're working in office, you cannot keep taking coffee breaks on and off. So whether you're working at office or whether you're working at home, you have to see to it that you're taking micro breaks which last from 5 to 10 seconds maximum. Okay, so here are some examples of their stretches. If you're interested, I would be sharing a link to this uh, with Dr. Kamal so you can get the death stretch chart from him. So basically, there are like 12 postures. These are like normal uh, PT exercises which we used to do in school, but they are in a certain uh, way how you have to do it. So let's say I have started my work at 9 o'clock and I have to end at 5. So I would do my first exercise, the first exercise at 9.30. Okay, which would last maybe for 10 to 20 seconds or 5 to 10 seconds, depending on my need. And then I put maybe a break reminder at 10 o'clock. And then I do the stretch. If you have time, you can do all of them together, which would take about 4 to 5 minutes. Then it is called a macro break. Okay, right now we are considering a micro break, which lasts for 5 to maximum 10 seconds, depending on the workload. So we have seen many people who are... Uh, you know, as a physiotherapist, you might be knowing that postural issues are very easy to treat, but the recurrence of this problem is very high. And so which is why to avoid the recurrence, it is very important that we make our patients aware of all these points and teach them their stretches. And this is very handy. I mean, you can just share that on WhatsApp or maybe uh, you can give them a, a print and then they can paste it on their workstation. And then, you know, uh, ask them to put a break reminder on their screen or on the mobile. And then this can really come handy. All right. So uh, this can be definitely be shared with you. All right. Now, this is a very uh, important slide, I feel, in these days, because many of us are working from home and doing household chores as well. So, uh, you know, I, of course, won't be de uh, discussing this in detail because the topic is totally different for the, you know, for today's event. But it is important that whenever you're use, you know, doing household chores, then also all these ergonomics would matter. Okay, what I mean by that is now, for example, for uh, washing utensils or mopping, imagine that the person has to stand. Then uh, make sure that you're keeping some distance between the feet, okay, up to about, let's say, one feet, so that you are not standing with feet together, okay? So where in base of uh, support is less. And if you have to bend a lot and you're seeing to wash utensils, just make sure that, you know, while you're keeping a distance, you're tucking in your tongue, you're engaging your core. So there's not a lot of stress coming on your lower back. Okay, so these points definitely can be remembered. 
and uh, it would be a good idea to share your work with your uh, family members if it is possible so that one person is not doing a lot of work like you know office work plus household chores because ultimately you can imagine the same muscles of course in a different way are being used uh, in multiple ways all right so thank you so much for uh, your patience and your listening. If you have uh, any questions, you can, uh, of course, uh, connect with Kamal. Or you can WhatsApp me to this number. Or uh, uh, you can shoot email. 